we move on to the next segment, that the penultimate segment of uh, WCC PCI 2014. Coming up is a state-of-the-art lecture on advanced CT coronary angiography beyond slightest. Our invited speaker is Padmashri Dr. Harsh Mahajan, Chief Radiologist at Mahajan Imaging Private Limited, New Delhi. He also has the honors of being the honorary radiologist to the President of India. Dr. Mahajan also happens to be the former president of the Indian Radiological and Imaging Association and he is also a consultant to the International Atomic Energy Association in Vienna, Austria. For the next 12 minutes, Dr. Harsh Mahajan, please. Thank you. Harsh, I know him for the last many years and I was just speaking to Mona that once upon a time we were very active in Indian Medical Association and he was a great winner of all the awards in Indian Medical Association. Then he came to CSI, then he came to many organizations. Wherever he goes, he wins. He brings the new technology, newer and newer every time, and he's going to be a prolific speaker in the CSI also. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. Harsh Mahajan, a great hero of imaging. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, I'll take you through where CT and geography has reached now and how things are changing with the, as the topic says, CT coronary and geography beyond slices, dual energy spectral CT, which uh, uh, we've been using now for over two years in our center uh, for both routine imaging as well as for uh, CT coronary and geography. Uh, there's been a long history of CT innovation started in the 70s and it's only in the late 90s and early 2000s that when multi-detector CT became available that things really started happening and there was interest in doing uh, cardiac uh, scanning. That's a four-slice coronary of the late 90s, uh, not very good, but this showed that at least you could start to begin to see the coronary arteries. The eight-slice coronary, which if a patient was able to hold his breath long enough, was very good. The 16 slice coronary, which, which is what we started with in the year 2003, and uh, it, even now, if I change the images and you know randomly put 16, 64, 128, 256, and even the newer spectral CT images together, in a patient who cooperated, was able to hold his breath, and had steady heart rate, you would get brilliant images. That's the 32, the 64, the 256, and the 320. And there were still, still limitations. Then came the dual source uh, uh, machine, two X-ray tubes working together, trying to speed it even more, and yet there were problems. Now these are images from our CT, which we use uh, on a daily basis, a dual energy, single source. This is one x-ray tube is able to produce dual energies when it fires once and also can do CT coronary angiography. This is only one company which still is capable of doing it, GE Healthcare, which has the machine for over two years now. The others can do dual energy spectral CT in other parts of the body but still fail to address the heart. Now, what are the problems that existed over the years and which were addressed by improvements before spectral CT became available? Image noise and quality at low KV scanning became possible. Complex scanning protocols, multi-phase imaging became possible. And over the years, the radiation dose continuously kept coming down from 15 to 20 millisieverts, which we used to use in the early days, to now mostly below five and below three millisieverts that we are able to get today. Below three millisieverts, ladies and gentlemen, is the same radiation dose that you get when you fly from New Delhi to New York and fly back. So that's the level of radiation that we are using uh, today and we'll see some of the images of that. What were the other things that still needed to be addressed? Stent visualization, and calcium blooming. When we had calcium scores of 300, 400, 700, we would just stop there and say, 
no point doing a CT and geography because there's going to be artifacts. We won't be able to say exactly what is the level of uh, obstruction. Then we needed further radiation dose reduction, and this has happened. Motion correction. Despite everything that you do, the heart, when it beats fast or irregularly, there are motion artifacts, and we needed algorithms to be able to correct that. We needed tissue characterization. What is the kind of plaque that we are seeing? Is it a vulnerable lipid plaque? Is it fibrotic? Is it calcific? And those are issues that are being addressed. And calcium suppression. Was there a technique available which could do away with this calcium, which could do away with the, uh, all the artifacts that calcium uh, 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 gave up, uh, came about? And then, is it possible in the same injection also to get myocardial perfusion, same radiation dose, same dose of contrast, one scan, can we do myocardial perfusion? And the solution, ladies and gentlemen, came about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and we got ours about, we were amongst the first few globally to actually get this commercial scanner, uh, uh, which came two years ago, and that's the machine, looks pretty much like any other machine. And this gave you stent visualization with reduced blooming. Now, this is calcium, and just by the algorithm, this is not as yet you are not using all the technology of spectral imaging, but just by te software techniques, look at this standard resolution. And when you went to a higher resolution algorithm, and this again, using the same degree of the radiation, and I'll keep stressing that because that's very important, and you could see much better. Now look at improved instant visualization. This is standard resolution on your left, mm -hmm. and this is high resolution, much sharper, much better defined. And also, when you look at the axials, and we can actually scroll up and down the artery, which we can straighten out so that the, the curves of the artery don't cause uh, any, any uh, fallacies in our interpretation. And then we look at it. You see very nice definition of the outline of the stent and the lumen within. This is a patent stent in the LCX, which you can see very nicely within it. Usually not possible to see it so well. Also, the stent material does matter, and these have improved over time. And in the axials, again, you can see absolutely clearly. Now, here you see severe stenosis in the proximal LAD, severe stenosis in the proximal LAD due to a mixed lipid and calcific plaque, and you show that the stent itself is patent. The stent is patent. This is disease proximal to the stent, which was responsible for the symptoms. Another patient with a history of chest pain, and you can see instant stenosis, very nicely seen here. You see this dark lines, and this is instant stenosis. You see it very nicely uh, on the axial images as well. So, you're getting improved visualization, low radiation dose. Now, cardiac CT, and this is a paper that came in 2010, cardiac CT at 1.3 to 4 millisieverts, high resolution. And today, it is possible in day-to-day -day clinical setting, that's a 2.9 millisieverts uh, uh, in a patient with uh, a BMI of 30. That's a patient with a BMI of 35 and mo 4 millisieverts. That's 36 BMI and 3 millisieverts. And you can see the myocardial bridging so very well. So no loss of quality. And that's a patient with 50 BMI. And there again, you are getting diagnostic quality images at about 5 millisieverts of radiation. Motion correction. And the challenge of coronary motion, you know better than what a radiologist can know. You see it beating all the time. And here, at 60 beats per minute is the ideal, where, you know, all three arteries can be seen at the same time when you are at 60 beats per minute. 
but that's a utopian situation. You usually don't have it. When you go above that, here you see at 60 beats, you are able to get this. And when you go anything above that, this is at 75 beats, and you can see that the three arteries are at different locations, so you are going to get artifacts due to this. Now, there is a software that was developed which is actually able to track the motion of the artery. As the heart contracts and expands and moves, it's able to look at the motion of the artery, correct it, and give you a corrected thing. This is not just software alone, but there's a lot of hardware involved as well. And here you see that's with correction. You saw that without, and this is with correction, bang on, and this really is helping us in day-to-day -day, uh, 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 clinical practice. Now, and, and we won't go into how it works. Suffice it to say that it works. And this is another case. You see calcium plaque. You see some haziness here. You're not really sure. And that's what the artery looks like with snapshot freeze, which we are able to do in each and every case that we take up for uh, CT coronary angiography. So even at 70, 100, 120 beats per minute, you're able to use this. That snapshot beats uh, 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 at 72 to 73 beats per minute, look at how hazy and look at what it makes uh, in this uh, patient. Now we come to the GEM, and this is GSI or gemstone spectral imaging, uses a garnet, which the ladies like to wear, very expensive piece. It takes the cost of the CT scan to double the best that was available before this came. And that's because it uses a lot of that garnet and also because this is new technology and they are going to charge more. With this, one is able to actually, in a sense, slow the heart without actually slowing it. We don't have time to go into details of that. Suffice it to say that using this, we are able to do dual energy spectral CT and are able to get 101 energy levels out of the data that we obtain in one scan. And as we go to higher energy levels, you can see that the artifact from blooming, the loss of visualization of the lumen, those all get taken away. And this is what is used to subtract one from the other. And this is a case, and this was a patient who had uh, 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 the calcium score of 2900. There was calcium all over and with gemstone spectral imaging you are able to see the lumen. Now this is 2900 and also this is capable of giving you perfusion in that same one injection. You can see sequel of an old infarct in another case, uh, another patient who had a calcium score of 2900 and you are able to see the lumen very well. This is a patient with a calcium score of 2192. There was calcium all over, and our study said that the angiogram is normal. Were we to believe it? The patient, of course, was asymptomatic, though he was a diabetic for many years, underwent a stress also. The, the perfusion map, which we got at rest, was normal. He was sent for a stress uh, thallium scan, which turned out to be normal. So another, a senior cardiologist father with uh, a pacemaker, so even with that we could do a CT angio and find out myocardial perfusion, you can do it routinely in every case who undergoes a CT angiogram. And, and the day is not far when we are going to use adenosine to give stress so that you can even get a stress myocardial perfusion scan along with the CT angiogram. Currently we've restricted ourselves to doing only uh, uh, resting uh, scans. And plaque material composition, can I just take a minute more? Plaque yeah. material composition, and there also, using the atomic number of the material, whether it's lipid, whether it's calcium, whether it's fibrosis, we are able to quantify the number and know what kind of plaque we are dealing with. A lot of work going on as I speak on this very aspect, but we can identify the plaque and try to characterize it. Then we can also get an IVUS view. We had a brilliant lecture on IVUS uh, uh, just a few hours ago, and we can get an IVUS view and look at things like that. 
that's uh, you know the beating heart seen from inside and this is all post processing we have collected the data and we can squeeze each and every information out of it depends on the competence of the radiologist and i think i'll call it a day with this one image which actually shows single injection right from the neck down to the mid thigh and this is a patient who had a dissection running into the carotid arteries going down all the way into the iliacs and they wanted to see the coronary arteries at the same time ladies and gentlemen i give you technology which is capable of doing most of what were the limitations of ct coronary angiography and the day is not far with further improvements that this will become a mainstay in non invasive imaging of the heart thank you so very much thank you very much dr mahajan we'll come back to the questions yeah harsh that was a brilliant uh, and a lucid presentation depicting the entire gamut of the technology over the years and i really congratulate you for what you give to the city of delhi at least and i think i think it must be used yes these machines today address radiation dose they address the heart rate we can do what was not possible even just about 2 years back harsh mahajan is a lovely orator and a very dear friend he has been the president of the uh, indian radiology association just a year back and i really really appreciate what he is doing he is a pioneer in in uh, especially mri and now of course he is doing wonderful work with ct congratulations to you for this lovely lecture the house is open for questions uh, ladies and gentlemen the more i hear harsh the more i learn the new things and the way he brought the concept of so called dual energy which i never understood and i was chatting with mona to help me out because i had to ask him some i had to give my comments and the way he mentioned about 101 energy and how we can see the whole lumen excluding the calcium whatever comes in the way and the way he described those stents which can be beautifully visualized and excluding the calcium we when we see a normal ct we can we can just see or predict it is stenosis but when you see from within the lumen we can say there is no stenosis the calcium is only in the wall and not confined to the uh, lumen so i think this is something very new which is coming up i have just only one query harsh i am sure you will have to answer mona has already responded on it my intention of life is that whatever we do we should not injure the endothelium or myocardium or any part of the body by radiation or by contrast do you think is there any future of mra for a coronary or do you think there is no future mona was very categoric she says we can do it only for proximal and middle what's your opinion well uh, uh, you know just as we have the best ct scanner that there is we have the best mr but i can tell you very frankly even though we do quite a bit of cardiac mr seeing the coronary arteries consistently on mr is a huge challenge and also with the noise that you have within the uh, uh, machine and the inconsistencies i think i would go for ct angiogram any day and also you know maybe for plaque characterization especially in other parts of the body rather than the coronaries in the neck maybe it it will have a role to play but with dual energy ct i think and using atomic numbers there's huge amount of work going on i think ct is the way to go and radiation has also come down dramatically i think the question of harsh sensitivity and specificity of the diagnosis also improved in the last few years or so so you are still preferring the heart rate between 60 and 70 sir uh, i i mean just a statement i'll make yeah. which is a statement of fact that on the same machine irrespective of which machine it is if the heart rate is slower you will get better ct angio than if the heart rate is faster mm -hmm. and you know one 50 mg tablet of uh, metoprolol you know unless it's contraindicated i would want to give to everyone because that improves the quality despite all the technology that we have still if the heart rate is 100 or if it is 70 the image quality will be better at 70 and than the, 
and the limitation of atrial fibrillation with a controlled ventricular rate. Now, Suppose the ventricular rate is about 70-80, but patient is having atrial fibrillation. Is it still a contraindication? Sir, there is a possibility now of excluding those beats. You Very can nice. exclude those beats huh. and yeah. get, get uh, the reformation. I congratulate Hello. you for this nice lecture. I really enjoyed it. Being a pediatric cardiologist, I'm, uh, my question is about, have you come in contact with a child with Kawasaki disease? You know, he's a four years old, five years old yeah, with yeah. abnormal coronaries yeah. and we'd like to image the coronaries. We found uh, difficulties in slowing the heart rate to this 60. We, uh, we yeah. cannot inject metoprolol or, uh, or propranolol IV. You can uh, produce a uh, cardiac arrest. Or, so uh, this no, technology will be to. wonderful. No, we don't need to uh, bring it to 60. Below 65 is what we need when we want to see perfusion and all that today. Actually, uh, 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 we are, we've already ordered the next uh, generation where, you know, irrespective of heart rate, you will still get perfusion, you will still be able to yeah. do, uh, remove the calcium. In children, uh, there's no problem, even at that increased heart rate, heart rate using huh? snapshot freeze technology, which I showed, mm -hmm. you can, you, can uh, you know, do away with the artifacts. You don't need to bring the heart rate down. Okay. Apart Thank from you. the, your uh, pulse positive Opin. and your, uh, I mean, the uh, pulse uh, artifacts and other things, I just would like to know if you compare with coronary angio, catheter angio, and your CT angio, and the further uh, diagnostic strategy line, what do you want to keep your CT angio uh, at the level? Whether, even if you can do a CT angio, borderline lesion, 40%, 50%, 60%, you have to do a nuclear myocardial perfusion scan. Well, to find out about it. Yeah. Number two questions is that even if you do a uh, do uh, detect the calcium region or arthritis plaque, you cannot detect whether it's a vulnerable or non-vulnerable. At that time, we do a PET CT to find out whether it's a vulnerable plug or non-vulnerable plug. So these are my two queries. Yeah, uh, responding to the first question, uh, you know, our selection criteria have to be very, very correct. It can either be high-risk screening or follow-up or indeterminate chest pain, whether it's cardiac, non-cardiac. When there is a, a, a suspicion of a, a significant degree of uh, coronary artery disease, I for one will never send a patient for a CT angio. He needs to go for an invasive angio and then determine whatever is to be done. Now, as regards 40, 50 and 60 percent, what this technology now is capable of is that in that same injection, it can give you perfusion as well. Currently, in our center, we are doing only resting, but with adenosine, which doesn't increase the heart rate much, we can also give stress at the same time, and, and so that will give everything, including stress myocardial perfusion. So I think this is going to be the future. I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, a yes. small yes. question. Myocardial perfusion scan as compared to IV adenosine, what we're talking about that. We do a lot of IV adenosine with IV dobutamine and stress myocardial perfusion scan. Dobutamine tends to raise ha, the heart rate. Have you rate. compared this, yeah. your IV adenosine, what you're telling about this, you can do and find out a borderline lesion stenosis. Have you compared the study with our nuclear perfusion scan? It has scan? been compared. What it is has your... been compared outside and it compares very favorably. Sanjay. But these are still early days. Last Sanjay. Still early days. Uh, a small question. Uh, concept was higher the slices you go more the radiation that was the caution most of us had yeah now you said dual energy source uh, where are we in the radiation 50 percent down the line now no, compared much to lower the than that i'll tell you below. and second question is uh, see most of us practically go for a stress test uh, maybe a stress thallium uh, after this uh, a uh, simple treadmill so where would you rate your corn uh, ct angio or, see, you run both the machines, stress thallium, you would be doing in your center, yes. you would be doing a CT, you would be doing an MRI. Where now would you put CT angio in your center, or like what should we follow? Yeah, very good questions. Now, uh, you know, we have to understand that do, there are dual source CTs, dual source means two X-ray tubes. That one company, Siemens is the one that came with dual source CTs. And we have dual energy CTs. Siemens, even with dual source CTs, does dual energy CT, but as yet, even with their latest offering, are not able to do cardiac dual energy. They do rest to the body. This G CT is a single source or single X-ray tube CT, 
which is able to fire so quickly that two energies are given at the same time. And what radiation dose, I'm telling you, is from that dual energy CT. So this has come below uh, 3 millisieverts. And in fact, we've done some CT angios in relatively thinner uh, patients, less than 1 millisievert also with diagnostic uh, yield. This used to be, with the 16 slice CT, 15 to 20 millisieverts. And when the 64 and 128 came, they were anywhere between 9 and 13 millisieverts. So okay. now we are more or less, uh, if I say we are below 5 millisieverts uh, most of the time, uh, that would be uh, a fact. The second question I've forgotten. Uh, second question uh, when is, to do it. Yes, when to yes, do yes, it, yes, because yes. you see, you are in your center, yeah, yeah. you have both the yeah, machines, yeah, yeah, yeah. a thallium I'll, or this one. In, in fact, I'll, I'll take the example of a, a you know, very senior journalist who just called me yesterday. And he'd been told by a very senior uh, cardiologist to get a stress thallium test done because he had some, you know, vague pain in the chest, exactly. not typical of, uh, you know, cardiac and all that. And so this is a very senior cardiologist whom I respect very much. And he said, get a stress thallium. This guy is a journalist, very senior. And uh, so I ended up telling him, he's 50 years of age. I told him, you get a CT angiogram done. Because if the CT angiogram is normal, then we don't need to do anything more. Point number one. Point number two, even with 90% stenosis on uh, 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 your angiogram, an uh, invasive angiogram or a CT angiogram, the myocardial perfusion may still be normal. Uh, we have the famous example of Bill Clinton, who had three arteries more than 90%, and he was jogging six miles. So, you know, when this technology wasn't available, or when radiation was a huge issue, or when there were a lot of technical glitches in doing the CT angiogram, you know, maybe I would have gone with the stress myocardial perfusion. But today, I would say in this indeterminate chest pain, there's no question that he has to, he should go for a CT angiogram. Number okay. two, uh, in I case we find 60, 70% stenosis, okay. or 50%, 60%, then, in the absence of a dual energy CT, one will have to go for a stress myocardial perfusion to see what is the hemodynamic effect of that narrowing. Then in the high risk screening group, those who are absolutely asymptomatic, today with low radiation dose, I think most of us who are above 50 and in the medical profession, they should all come to me and get their CT angios done for free. Uh, you know, they should come we, we don't look after ourselves, but I think all of us need to come. We live I'm in a sorry, very high risk situation. Just one second. The last two comments. Quick. When do you intend making cine angiography obsolete? Well, sir, I, I think because of the selectivity of injection, you know, here we are getting an overall view. Because you're able to inject selectively into an artery and see how one artery feeds the other, I don't think it will get replaced. Right now, we can do everything in Cine. We can give you EF. We can do, I, I mean, I didn't put those images because that has been available uh, for nearly seven, eight, nine years. But I think selective angiography cannot be replaced. Let's give a big hand to Harsh for his most Thank outstanding you very much. and lucid presentation. Dr. Mahajan, may I invite I request Dr. Colonel Kapoor to please step forward and present a memento to Dr. Dr. Parashar to please join me and give a token of appreciation to Harsh. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahajan.